نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكنا في الدين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته سوره الفرقان النمل This surah was revealed in Mecca having seven stanzas 93 verses 27th by the order of arrangement and the name of the surah is because of the fourth verse of the second stanza where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned wadi an naml the valley of the naml the naml which is mentioned here is what is the ant in arabic now the time period of the revelation is in the second period of uh, maka and ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala and who has reported here that the order of the revelations of the surah was surah shura followed by surah naml and then surah al qasas the topic and the summary of the surah is basically uh having two debates the first debate is from the start to the end of the fourth stanza and the second debate is from the fifth stanza to the end of the surah so in the first debate from the start to the fourth stanza allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained that only those can receive the guidance from quran who actually accept who actually accept have faith and belief and then adopt the messages of quran the main reason for disobedience has been explained as refusing to believe in hereafter and to have fear of hereafter and after this basic introduction in the first debate allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given three examples the first example of pharaoh of the leaders of samud and the transgressors of the nation of lud and allah has shown that how despite receiving the signs and the warnings they obstinately they stuck up to their disobedience and transgression and hence how the torment of allah fell upon them and uh, then the next example was of hazrat suleiman alaihi salam who was blessed but still he stayed obedient and he submitted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in full obedience and the third example was of a highly of a highly developed nation of saba and the story of the queen why she refused initially and when and how she believed in the lord of the world after she had got and she had received the signs and in the second debate which starts from the fifth stanza to till the end of the surah in the second debate allah subhanahu wa taala mentions the signs of the universe and invites towards belief in the oneness of allah verse number 1 allah subhanahu wa taala is starting with the words of ta seen these are the verses of quran and a clear book allah subhanahu wa taala mentions the signs of uh, the book and its verses as a guidance and good tidings for the believers who are the believers allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that this is a book allah introduces its worship, uh, verses and then says that this book is a source of guidance and good tidings not for all but only and only for whom who are the believers the believers who believe in it and who act on it so fix that up believers are those who believe in it and who act on it and then allah subhanahu wa taala in the next verses is going to explain a few manners and traits of the believers so the believers are what who establish the prayer and give zakat and of the here after they are certain in faith indeed for those who do not believe in here after we have made pleasing to them their deeds so they wander blindly 
So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, explaining the uh, behavior and the mannerism of the believers. And on the contrary, in contrast to the believers, the disbelievers, they wander around because of the failure of the belief hereafter. And similarly, it means very clearly, it is uh, reminding us that it is the belief on Allah. It is a belief on Allah which keeps the person staying on the straight path. It is the fear. It is the fear of accountability on the day of judgment. It is a fear of the punishment on the day of judgment. And it is the fear of the torments on the day of the judgment is what keeps the person on the right path because this is what the, deter uh, what the deterrent is. All these all these fears and all these beliefs are what are the deterrents for sin and for transgression. Those are the ones for whom there will be the worst of punishments in the hereafter. They are the greatest losers. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. And indeed, you receive the Quran from one who was who is the wise and knowing. Verse number seven mentioned when Musa salam said to his family. So now from verse number 17 to 13, again, a small part of events of Hazrat Musa salam are being repeated. Musa salam sent to his family, indeed, I have perceived a fire. I will bring you from there information or will bring you a burning torch that you may warm yourselves. But when he came to it, he was called, blessed is whoever is at the fire and whoever is around it and exalted is Allah, Lord of the worlds. O Musa, indeed, it is I, Allah, the exalted in might and wise. And he was told, throw down your staff. But when he said, but when he saw it writhing as if it were a snake, he turned in flight and did not return. Allah said, O Musa, fear not. Indeed, in my presence, the messengers do not fear. Otherwise, he who wrongs. So the only person who fears Allah is who wrongs. Then substitute good after evil. Indeed, I am forgiving and merciful. And put your hand in the opening of your garment at the breast. It will come out white without disease these are among the nine signs you will take to pharaoh and his people indeed they have been defiantly disobedient but when they when they came to them our signs they said this is obvious magic and they rejected them while their inner selves were convinced thereof out of injustice and haughtiness so see how was the end of the corruptors and we had certainly given to Dawood and Suleiman knowledge. And they said, praise is due to Allah who has favored us over many of his disbelieving servants. So from now onwards, for the next few verses is the story of Hazrat Suleiman He was the heir to his father, both in kingdom and prophethood. And he was the youngest son of Hazrat Dawood His kingdom was the current land of Palestine, Transjordan, and a part of Syria also. And the period of Hazrat Suleiman was 965 BC to 926 BC. Now, both the father and the son, as we learn from Quran, they are an excellent, they are an excellent example of gratitude. Allah had blessed them. They had, they had plenty of blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but for all the blessings, they were grateful and they had the remembrance of Allah. They remembered Allah humbly and had not even the slightest of arrogance in their behavior. In gratitude, in gratitude to Allah, they used to spend in the obedience of Allah and in the path of Allah to serve humanity and to serve Islam. Due to this grateful behavior, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further, further blessed them. And this was the rule of Allah, which is announced in Quran. La in shakaratum la azidannakum. That if you are grateful to me, I will bless you even more. So the father and the son, they stayed grateful to Allah. They exhibited and demonstrated gratitude, remembrance, and humbleness after uh, receiving the profuse bounties of Allah. And so Allah blessed them even more, and the cycle continued. <coughs> 
And Hazrat Sulaiman inherited Dawud He said, O oh people, we have been taught the language of birds and we have been given from all things. Indeed, this is an evident bounty. Hazrat Sulaiman could understand the language of birds. This was an extraordinary skill. But there was no arrogance. There was no boasting of his skill. Instead, he is humbly acknowledging the blessings of Allah, saying, Inna hadha wal fadlul mubin. In the normal day-to-day -day life, we see something which is totally contrary to this. We see a person who is fluent, who is versatile in a few languages, starts getting proud and starts like flaunting and boasting around in arrogance. Remember, boastfulness and arrogance is disliked by Allah. La yuhibbu man kana muhtalan fakhura. Verse number 17, and gathered for Suleiman were his soldiers of jinn and men and birds, and they were marching in rows. So uh, good, uh, as a good leader, he was maintaining discipline and uh, maintaining organization also. Verse number 18, until when they came upon the valley of and Swadi and Namul, this is from where the surah gets its name. And uh, why was this valley known as Wadi and Namul? It uh, derived its name from uh, two sources we learn in different commentaries. The first reason which is explained is that in this valley, there were many colonies of ants. And because of the ant hills, it's got, it, got, it, uh, it got its name of the valley of ants. And the second reason which has been explained is that the person whose name was Namal, he settled here to start with. And so the valley came to be known by his name. And when the uh, when the army of Azza Suleiman was coming here, what did the ants say? Uh, uh, one of the ants said, "O oh, ants, enter your dwellings that you might not be crushed by Suleiman and his soldiers while they perceive not." So obviously, Azza Suleiman he understood this. So Azza Suleiman smiled, amused at her speech, and said. Rabbi awzirni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an a'mala swalihan tarzwahu wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika swalihin. Beautiful supplication by Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam. He said, my Lord, enable me to be grateful for your favor. So when he is seeing and he's experiencing so much of knowledge and skill and wealth and power and authority and armies all subordinated to him, then he turned what? He said that, that just keep me grateful to you. Because he wanted to stay humble to Allah. And we know that gratitude and humbleness, they go side by side. Enable me to be grateful for your favor, which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents. So he was asking for gratitude. And that is exactly what Prophet ﷺ is also seen asking. Rabbi a'ini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. And rather than being proud in this situation, he was asking for what? For gratitude, for ability to be gratitude. Because, you know, to purify our heart from arrogance, we need to be grateful. He asked the ability of being grateful for blessings bestowed to whom? To himself and to his parents also. So what does this teach us? It teaches us to what extent we need to be grateful to, not only for our blessings, not only for what blessings we have received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also for blessings what our parents were blessed with. How extensive do we need to be in gratitude? And remember, being grateful for what our parents were blessed with is also very rightly so. Because the blessings of our parents have a very deep influence in our lives also. And we also happen to avail from our own blessings and the blessings of our parents. So being grateful needs to do what? An armala swalehan. He said that I being grateful means that I need to do good and righteous deeds. Which righteous deeds? Tarozwahu, which will please you. So this is actually what gratitude to the blessings of Allah is that. 
thanking Allah by word of mouth and being grateful to Allah in our heart and mind and then doing deeds which please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah taking Allah as our benefactor to be mindful of his player and and exceed even more in his obedience. So this is how he supplicated for his gratitude. Verse number 20, he took attendance of the birds and said, why do I not see the woodpecker? Or is he among the absents? Hazrat Suleiman is an army chief and he was carrying out an inspection of the army battalions. This is what? This is an efficient and a dutiful leader continuously checking and supervising and surveillance, which is very vital. While inspection, he noticed that one of the birds, the woodpecker, was not there. So what did he do? He said that why is he absent? And 21 words he dealt very strictly with. He said, I will surely punish him and with severe punishment or slaughter him unless he brings me a clear authorization. So after a short while, when he realized that uh, the bird was not there, he, he decided to deal with the absence. That is, this is lack of discipline. So he tried and he announced to deal with it strictly. Verse number 22, but the woodpecker stayed no longer and said, I have encompassed in knowledge that which you have not encompassed. And I have come to you from the nation of uh, Sabah with a certain news. Indeed, I found there a woman ruling them, and she has been given of all the things, and she has a great throne. I found her and her people prostrating to the sun instead of Allah, and shaitan has made their deeds pleasing to them and averted them from his way, so they are not guided. So uh, when after a short while, when the bird came back, he the bird gave it's excuse for the absence. And uh, it had been around gathering information regarding the people of Saba. And he, he had told that they were what? They were the worshippers of sun. So they were what? They were a polytheistic nation. And seeing them prostrate for creations of the creator was very surprising for the bird. When, when the bird saw that they were worshipping a creation, the sun, a creation of the creator, himself he the bird was surprised this is because you know all the creation all the creation prostrate before allah and when they see and when all the creations of allah who prostrate before allah when they see the superior beings despite all their intellect despite all their intelligence and despite all their knowledge and know know how and knowledge see the superior being prostrating and worshiping other than allah then this surprises the creations of Allah. So the woodpecker was surprised finding them worship the sun. And so they do not prostrate to Allah who brings forth what is hidden within the heavens and the earth and knows what you conceal and what you declare. Allah, there is no dicey except him, Lord of the great throne. Suleiman said, we will see whether you were truthful or one of the liars. So like a just and like a truthful ruler, Hazrat Suleiman did not believe in what the news was brought to him right away. He needed verification. He needed proof before believing. Verse number 28, take this letter of mine and deliver it to them. Then leave them and see what answer they will return. So Hazrat Suleiman gave the bird, a subordinate, a letter which he, uh, which he had written for the nation addressing the queen of Saba and uh, asked the bird to observe their behavior and their response. Remember, there are many skills and inventions which were taught to the human beings through the messengers of Allah. This means of transporting the letters was not known to human beings before Hazrat Suleiman <coughs> and this mean of transporting the letters through the birds was first of all introduced to humanity through Hazrat Suleiman She said, who is this she? The queen of Saba. O eminent ones, indeed to me has been delivered a noble letter. Now this is the queen of Saba. 
Tradition suggests different names, but in the Quran, she has been just mentioned as the queen of the people of Saba. Saba was not the name of the queen. Saba was name of the nation, and she has just been called as the queen of Saba. And no other name has been mentioned by Quran or by Hadith. Now, why did she introduce this letter as a noble letter? What was so extraordinary about the letter which she felt? Number one, she knew that it was from a king of a superpower of the time, King Suleiman. And then it was she she saw that it was sent in a very extraordinary and unusual manner, which was not precedented before. And then it started with an unusual phrase, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. As a Suleiman has started it with this phrase, uh, with this verse, and it was the Sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, to start when he used to dictate his letters. He also used to start it with the words of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Remember, the teachings and the Sunnah of all the prophets were basically and essentially similar. So she realized that it was starting with an unusual verse. She had had never come across this verse previously. And then the subject of the letter was also very aggressive. And it was also very firm and yet very impressive. And the statement was, Allah ta'ala wa alayya wa atuni muslimin. The order was very firm. And Hazrat Suleiman had very firmly ordered submission and invited in a very impressive manner towards the religion, which was still unknown to the queen. Indeed, it is from Suleiman, and indeed it reads, in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful and the specially merciful, be not haughty with me, but come to me in submission as a Muslim. So these were the points which the queen very sensibly picked out that it was an extraordinary letter. Verse 32, she said, O eminent ones, advise me in my affairs. I would not decide a matter until you witness for me. So she took advice from her counselors in the court. Counseling is a very, very effective trick for successful administration and man management. Verse 30, uh, 33, they said, we are men of strength and of great military might, but the command is yours. So see what you will command. Her counselors and all her subordinates, they were obedient, they were sincere, and they were compliant, and they were confident about her decisions. This all points out to what? The wisdom and the sensible administration and control by the queen over her people. Verse number 34, she said, Indeed, kings, when they enter a city, they ruin it and render the honor of its people humbled. Thus do they do. So she voiced out her normal experiences about the worldly warriors and the rulers, which obviously were very different with Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam. Verse number 35, but indeed, I will send to them a gift and see what reply the messengers will return. So now what the queen decided to do was she was very tactful and she tried to uh, try Hazrat Suleiman salam by sending him a gift of golden bricks. What she wanted to analyze was his love and his lust for wealth, for gold and for riches, because she was wanting to decide whether she could bribe him and stop him from attacking. She could bribe Hazrat Suleiman salam with the riches she had so that she could stop him and deter him from attacking his people. Now, I would stop here to analyze the traits and some qualities of the queen because she was obviously a very successful woman and she, it seems, was very popular in her nation. So what traits and what behavior gave her this status? She, unlike the women, generally was cool-minded and she was patient. Because like we see that after reading the letter and receiving the threat of attack by Suleiman in such an aggressive manner, she did not panic. She did not get flabbergasted. She stayed cool. She was composed. She planned and she was counseling. She was carrying out. She was very clever. She was wise and she was analytical. So, and then when she gave her gift also, she was trying to be very, uh, very wise and very analytical in planning what she wanted to do for her people. 
So when they came to Sulaiman Islam, he said, do you provide me with wealth? But what Allah has given me is better than what he has given to you. Rather, it is you who rejoice in your gift. So when Hazrat Sulaiman received the gift which the Queen of Sabah had offered, he did not approve of this gift and returned it back. In fact, he disliked, he showed his dislike for being sent with this gift. And why was this? There was no love. There was no love and lust for the worldly riches, for the golds and the silver and the wealth of this world. Because he was grateful for what he had. So you realize the importance of gratitude. What beautiful feelings will being grateful inculcate in our hearts. A person who is grateful will stay safe from arrogance. A person who is grateful will learn to be humble. And here we are learning that a person who is grateful will be saved from the evil love of the world and the lust of the worldly riches. So we see how vital it is being grateful to Allah. A person who is grateful stays humble and is saved from indulging in the lust and the greed of the world. Allahumma jahalli saburan wa jaalli shakura rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. So when they came to him, he discarded and he returned the gift. Verse number 37, he said, return to them, for we will, we will surely come to them with soldiers that will be powerless to encounter and we will surely ex expel them. <coughs> And we will surely expel them therefrom in humiliation and they will be displaced. He returned the gift and warned them that even more aggressively, he will now attack them, which he had previously. Verse number 38, Suleiman Islam said, O assembly of jinn, which of you will bring me her throne before they come to me in submission? Verse 39, a powerful one of them among the jinn said, I will bring it to you before you rise from your place. And indeed, I am for this task strong and trustworthy. Verse 40 said, one who had knowledge from the scripture, I will bring it to you before your glance returns to you. And when Suleiman saw it placed before him, he said, this is from the favor of my Lord to test me whether I will be great Grateful or ungrateful, and whoever is grateful, his gratitude is only for the benefit of himself. And whoever is ungrateful, then indeed my Lord is free of need and is generous. So there is a dialogue of Hazrat Suleiman with the people in the court, and he was sure that the queen. And the people of Sabah, they will embrace Islam. So uh, he decided to test the queen. And he asked the people who will bring his throne. First person was a jinn. But the second person explained, is not explained who it was. The only thing which has been explained here is that he had the knowledge of the scripture. Now in this verse number 40, what happened was that the throne of Queen of Saba was presented to Hazrat Suleiman in a split of a second. MashaAllah. Now, had there been someone else, the person would have definitely boasted about, about the strength and the power of his subordinates and of his followers would have been would have been flaunting about the control and the authority and the power and the rule he had. But nothing of the sort is seen here in the manner of Hazrat Isa, Hazrat Suleiman Islam. He is showing total humbleness, gratitude, and total self-control. Remember, humbleness and gratitude, they go hand in hand. On begetting one, we will be getting other. After receiving the throne in his court, he acknowledged that this is the blessing of Allah. And he said that this is a trial with which the Lord wanted to see whether he is grateful or not.
And he said, disguise for her, her throne. We will see whether she will be guided to the truth or will be of those who is not guided. So the throne in a slightly disguised form. Hazrat Suleiman ordered this, that the throne in a slightly altered and disguised form is shown to the queen. And this was done for the purpose to test her, to test her intellect and to test how wise she was and how sharp and how clueful she was. And uh, how did the queen behave now? She said, when she arrived, she said, it was said to her, is this, is your throne like this? She said, it is as though it was it. Suleiman said, and we were given knowledge before her. And we were given knowledge before her and we have been Muslims in submission to Allah. The queen was very wise and she was extremely tactful. She did not give a categorical answer telling them that it was her throne which they had stolen or they had displaced. But her answer was very balanced, trying not to avert Hazrat Suleiman trying to stay on the right side. Of Hazrat Suleiman Islam. She said, Ka annahu hova. It looks like mine. It looks as if it's like mine. She, she commented like between lines. And above all, the queen was wise and sensible enough. She observed, she observed the power, the authority, and control of Hazrat Suleiman Islam. And she was not foolishly obstinate and stubborn. Observing all the power and authority of Hazrat Suleiman Islam. And then not being obstinate and stubborn, she realized that if such a king, if such a king of such a power and authority and rule had accepted the supremacy and oneness of Allah, then this had to be the truth. And she had not known in all this in her previous life. And she was also not egoistic. So all her positive traits, they helped her towards guidance and she accepted Islam saying, Wa kunna she, she submitted to Allah and she submitted to Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam. Verse number 43, and that which she was worshipping other than Allah has averted her from submitting to him. Indeed, she was from a disbelieving people. Verse number 44, she was told, enter the palace. But when she saw it, she thought it was a body of water and uncovered her shins to wade through. He said, indeed, it is a palace whose floor is made of smooth uh, whose floor is made smooth with glass. She said, my Lord, indeed, I have wronged myself and I submit with Suleiman salam to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Now, Allah here explains the reason of her previous religious status, but she had not made it an issue of ego. There was no ego problem with her. She uh, being the queen, she did not believe that she was the queen. And if she starts believing against what she has spent the rest of her life doing, what impact will it create? And um, that I've left my religion of my previous life, no ego problems. So that is why she believed in the teachings of Hazrat Suleiman salam, and she submitted. And she was like, she was like no obstinate and she was like no stubborn person. Now, in this verse number 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the final trial Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam tried her with. Um, she was sent to, um, how, how did he try, uh, try her previously? She, he, was, uh, he tried her by sending his uh, extraordinary letter. Then he tried her by showing her translocated and transported throne. And now she was tried finally by making her enter the splendid and the magnificent palace. The palace, the floors of the palace were of shining polished glass. Now, when the queen stepped, she thought and she assumed that it was a pool of water. So thinking that her dress might get wet, she exposed, she raised her dress and she exposed her sins. <coughs> Remember, the shin of a Muslim woman is a satar and she is not supposed to expose it. 
So Hazrat Suleiman al-Islam immediately told her that she should let her draws dress down and she should cover her shrine as it was just a floor of glass. Now, seeing such a remarkable king with his magnificent palace and his powers and his authority, she bowed. She thought that this king was bowing down to the king of kings. Her faith strengthened and she confessed that she had wronged herself and she vowed solemn submission to the Lord of the worlds. Confession, seeking forgiveness is what Allah likes from his bondsmen. And it leads to what? It leads to forgiveness of sins and leading to increase of faith and the strength of belief. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al mutatwakhirin Verse number 45, and we certainly sent to Samud and their brother Saleh, saying, Worship Allah. And at once there were two parties conflicting. He said, Oh, my people, why are you impatient for evil instead of good? Why don't you not seek forgiveness of Allah that you may receive mercy? They said, We consider you a bad omen, you and those with you. He said, Your omen is with you, is with Allah. Rather, you are a people being tested. And there were in the city nine family heads causing corruption in the land and not amending its affairs. They said, take a mutual oath by Allah that we will kill him by night, he and his family. Then he, we will say to his executor, we did not witness the destruction of his family. And indeed, we are truthful. And they planned a plan. We planned a plan while they perceived not. They And then look, how was the outcome of their plan that we destroyed them and their people all? So those are their houses desolate because of the wrong they had done. Indeed, and that is a sign for people who knew. And we saved those who believed and used to fear Allah and mentioned Lut when he said to his people, do you commit immorality when you are seeing? Do you indeed approach men with desire instead of women? Rather, you are a people behaving ignorantly. But the answer of his people was not, except that they said, expel the family of Lut from your city. Indeed, they are people who are keeping themselves pure. So we saved him and his family, except for his wife. We destined her to be those who remained behind and we rained upon them a rain of stones and evil was the rain of those who were warned say praise be to Allah and peace be upon his servants whom he has chosen is Allah better or what they associate with him more precisely it is he not best who created heavens and the earth and sent down for you rain from the sky, causing to grow thereby gardens of joyful beauty, which you could not otherwise have grown the trees thereof? Is there a deity with Allah? No, but they are people who ascribe equals to him. Is he not best who made the earth a stable ground and placed within it rivers and made for it firmly set mountains and placed between the two seas a barrier? Is there a deity with Allah? No, but most of them do not know. Allahumma la taj'al na minhum. Is there, is he not best who responds to the desperate one when he calls upon him and removes evil and makes you inheritors of the earth? Is there a deity with Allah? Little do you remember. Is he not best who guides you through the darkness of the land and the sea, who sends the wind as good tidings before his mercy? Is there a deity with Allah? High is Allah above whatever they associate with him. Is he not the best who begins creation and then repeats it, who provides for you from heaven and earth? Is there a deity with Allah? Say, produce your proof if you should be truthful. Say, none in the heavens and earth knows the unseen except Allah, and they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. Rather, their knowledge is arrested concerning the hereafter. Rather, they are in doubt about it. Rather, they are concerning it all blinded. 
So here in this verse, after introducing the believers towards the oneness and the powers and the authorities of Allah, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about the belief, uh, belief in hereafter. Verse 67, and those who disbelieve, disbelieve in what? In hereafter and in the resurrection. They say, when we have become dust as well as our forefathers, will we indeed be brought out of the graves? We have been promised this, we and our forefathers before. This is not but the legends of the former people say, travel through the la land and observe how was the end of the criminals and grieve not over them or be in distress from what they conspire. And they say, when is the fulfillment of this promise? If you should be truthful, say, perhaps it is close behind you, some of that for which you are impatient. And indeed, your Lord is full of bounty for the people, but most of them do not show gratitude. And indeed, your Lord knows what their breasts conceal and what they declare. And there is nothing concealed within the heaven and the earth except that it is in a clear register. Indeed, this Quran relates to the children of Israel most of that over which they disagree. And indeed, it is a guidance and mercy for the believers. Indeed, your Lord will judge between them by his wise judgment, and he is exalted in mind and knowing. So rely upon Allah. Indeed, you are upon the clear truth. Indeed, you will not make the dead hair, nor will you make the deaf hair the call when you have turned, when they have turned their backs retreating, and you cannot guide the blind away from their error. You will only make hear those who believe in our verses, so they are Muslims submitting to Allah. And when the word befalls them, and when the word befalls them, we will bring forth for them a creature from earth speaking to them saying that the people were one of uh, people were of our verses not certain in faith this is what dabatum min al earth is a sign of the resurrections and uh, when all the people uh, when there will be the death of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam then after that all the believers will also pass away and the and the whole of the earth will be filled by the disbelievers, the disobedience and the dis and the transgressors who will just fail to remember Allah, who will just fail to mention Allah, who will just be transgressing on the earth. So then when all remembrance and orders of Allah will be forgotten by the order of Allah, this animal will be sent, the earth will split, the animal will come out and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless the ability to talk. This animal will be blessed, the ability to talk, and the animal will address the transgressors and the disbelievers, reminding them of the orders of Allah and the attributes of Allah. <coughs> and warn of the day when we will gather from every nation a company of those who deny our signs, and they will be driven in rows until when they arrive at the place of judgment, he will say, did you deny my signs while you encompass them in knowledge or what was that you were doing? And the decree will befall them for the wrong they did, and they will not be able to speak. <coughs> Do they not see that we made the night that they may rest therein and the day giving sight? Indeed, in that are signs for people who believe and born of the day of horn will be blown and whoever is in the heaven and whoever is on the earth will be terrified except whom Allah wills and all will come to him humbled. And you see the mountains thinking them rigid while they will pass as the passing of clouds. It is the work of Allah, who perfected all things, indeed he is acquainted with which, uh, with uh, with that which you do. Whoever comes at judgment with good deeds will have better than it, and they from the terror of the day will be saved. And whoever comes with an evil deed, their faces will be overturned in fire. Allahumma ajirna min an nar, and it will be said. Are you recompensed except for what you used to do? 
say, I have only been commanded to worship the Lord of the city who made it sacred to whom belongs all the things. And I'm commanded to be of Muslims and those who submit to Allah and to recite the Quran. And whoever is guided is only guided for the benefit of himself. And whoever is praised, say, I am only one of the warners. And say, Allah's praise, Allah, all praise is due to Allah, Alhamdulillah. He will show you his signs and you will recognize them. And your Lord is not unaware of what you do. So the summing up note is warning as well as invitation. Worship one Allah, be the pointers to join Islam, to recite the book of Allah. This will benefit the bondsmen themselves only. Allahumma hasibna hisabin yaseera. Rabbana la tuzi'a qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaqbiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil aizzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen. Summa ameen.
احمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري و يسر لي امري و احلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي و جعل لي وزير من اخلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين اللهم ألهمنا رشدا وعزنا من شدور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباع اللهم أرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا آمين ثم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة القصص This surah was revealed in Mecca, having 88 verses, 9 stanzas, and 28 by the order of arrangement. The name of the surah is because in the verse number 25, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَصَّ عَلَيْهِ الْقَصَصَ That narration of a few stories from the life of the prophets. The time period of revelation as reported by Ibn Abbas anhu, when he narrates the order of revelation that the first to be revealed was Surah Al-Qasas, then Surah An-Naml, and finally Surah Ash-Shu'ara. The story of Hazrat Musa salam, has been narrated in fragments, which has been narrated in fragments previously, will be completed here in Surah Al-Qasas. The topic and the summary of the Surah is that here in the verses, Allah will be explaining that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he creates, he plans something, he plans something or he decides to do something, then he himself creates resources for it, but in a very unfelt manner. And if Allah has to choose a bondsman for his service, then no festive occasion or announcement is created. Now, where did the prophethood of Prophet Salaam start? in the cave of Hira, just one night, all of a sudden. And similarly for Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, while he was traveling back to Egypt. So, and we also will learn that Allah chooses someone for his service. He is picked out all by himself, without a clan, without any arms or ammunition or power or authority, or without any position of wealth or riches. Then with the help of Allah, this chosen servant of Allah, comes out victorious finally. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Tawasim. Tilka aya tulkita bil mubin. Natlu alayka min nabar imusa wa fir'auna bil haqqi likaumi yu'minun. Tawasim. Mim. These are the verses of the clear book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repeatedly called the Quran as Kitab al Mubin, the book which is clear cut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all understand this clear cut book, this best book with total clarity of vision and mind, and help us obey the commandments which we go through, which we learn in this clear book with total clarity and with total steadfastness. We recite to you from the news of Musa salam, and Pharaoh in truth for people who believe. Indeed, Pharaoh exalted himself in the land and made its people into factions, oppressing a section among them, slaughtering their newborn sons and keeping their females alive. Indeed, he was of the corruptors and we, and we wanted to confer favor upon those who were oppressed in the land and make them leaders and make them inheritors. So when did he, when did Pharaoh start doing all this he was when he uh, when before the birth of Hazrat Musa salam, the pharaoh had a dream that a person from the slave Bani Israel the nation of the slaves of Bani Israel will dethrone him verse number 6 to 13 now part of the story of Umm Musa has been narrated and establish them in the land and show Pharaoh and his minister Haman and their soldiers through them that which they had feared. 
and we inspired to the mother of Musa, suckle him. But when you fare for him, cast him in the river and do not fear and do not grieve. Indeed, we will return to him, return him to you and will make him one of the messengers. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now narrating the part of the story where uh, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was born and because of the order, Umm Musa was fearing that the brutal soldiers will snatch him from her and will kill him in front of her. So there is where she was inspired by this order and this suggestion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once again, will I highlight that this order obviously was a very difficult uh, inspiration to accept. And uh, secondly, it somehow did not seem as a probable solution to the problem also. But remember that orders of Allah are full of wisdom and all those who obey will obviously get the blessings, the mercy and the help of Allah. And Allah always, we also learn from here that Allah always fulfills his promises. And what happens is what Allah plans. And then when he plans something, he creates the conditions and he creates the resources for what he had planned. And Allah plans are, Allah's plans are always successful and the plans of the most powerful of rulers and the most bitter of the enemies, they fail until Allah, Allah has planned to do something. And then from here, we also learn the importance of nursing the babies by the mothers. That is the importance of lactation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried to ensure the lactation to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to give him physical strength also. And the family of Pharaoh picked him up out of the river so that he would be he would become to them an enemy. And a cause of grief, indeed, Pharaoh and Haman and their soldiers were deliberate sinners. And the wife of Pharaoh said, he will be a comfort of the eye for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us or we may adopt him as a son. And they perceived not. And the heart of Musa alayhi salam's mother became empty of all else. She was about to dis disclose the matter concerning him. Had we not bound fast her heart that she would be of the believers. And she said to his sister, follow him. So she watched him from a distance while they perceived not. And we had prevented from him all wet nurses before. So she said, shall I, who said the sister, shall I direct you to a household that will be responsible for him for, a while, uh, for, um, for you while they are to him for his upbringing sincere? So we restored him to his mother that she might be content and not grieve and that she would know that the promise of Allah is true, but most of the people do not know. And when he attained his full strength and was mentally mature, we bestowed upon him judgment and knowledge, and thus we do reward the doers of good. Now from verse number 15 to 21 is the narration when Hazrat Musa alayhi salam had, had committed an unintentional, unintentional murder. Verse number 15, he entered the city at a time of in inattention by its people. The time of inattention by its people was what? When the people were sleeping and that is the time of the morning prayers, the, uh, the prayer of Fajr. And found therein two men fighting, one from his faction and one from among his enemy. And one from his faction called for help to him against the one from his enemy. So Musa alayhi salam struck him and unintentionally killed him. Musa alayhi salam said, this is from the work of Shaitan. Indeed, he is manifest misleading enemy. So the two men who were fighting were whom? Uh, one of them was a poor slave from the people of Bani Israel. And he used to go and he used to collect wood from the forest. And this he used for lighting his stove. And <coughs> <coughs> he used to light it to, he used to burn it to light his stove. And he used to also used to sell it. And this was a source of earning for him. And the second was the person who was the cook in the kitchen of Pharaoh. And he was doing what? That he was forcibly trying to take away the slave's wood. So he asked for Hazrat Musa alayhi salam's help. 
and to help the oppressors as the sunnah of uh, the prophets. And similarly, uh, was Hazrat Musa Islam did that he was just trying to be helpful to the oppressor, and he hit the uh, he hit the person and uh, to help the person of Bani Israel and without intention to kill him, but he killed him accidentally and totally unintentionally. And when he killed him unintentionally, what did Hazrat Musa Islam said? He said that this is what this is from the work of Shaitan, and he had misled him to do so. And what he did was. He said, my Lord, indeed, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. And he forgave him. Indeed, he is the forgiving and merciful. So once he had committed an accidental and an unintentional murder, Hazrat Musa Islam did what? He confessed, he regretted, and he repented, and he seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah likes all those who sin and then seek forgiveness. As Prophet وسلم, said, that all the people of all the sons and children of Hazrat Adam salam, are but to err and they will all sin. But the best of those who err and sin are those who repent and seek forgiveness. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al he said, my Lord, for the favor you bestowed upon me, I will never be an assistant to the criminals. Verse number 18. And he became inside the city fearful and anticipating exposure when suddenly the one who sought his help the previous day cried out to him once again. Musa salam said to him, indeed, you are an evident, persistent deviator. That is that every second day you manage to get into a fight. And when he wanted to strike the one who was an enemy to both of them, he said, O oh Musa alayhi salam, do you intend to kill me as you killed someone yesterday? You only want to be a tyrant in the land and do not want to be one of the amenders. Verse 20, and a man came from the farthest end of the city running. He said, O oh Musa alayhi salam, indeed the eminent ones are conferring upon over you, intending to kill you, so leave the city. Indeed, I am to you of the sincere advisors. So the next morning, he faced the same situation all over again. And the person, this now, the other person, gave Hazrat Musa alayhi salam the news. And he also kept on, he, he warned him of all the plans of the leaders of, um, of Pharaoh that they were planning to kill him. Verse 21, so he left it fearful and anticipating apprehension. He said, my Lord, save me from the wrongdoing people. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an unfelt manner is now shifting Hazrat Musa alayhi salam out of Egypt. First, he was kept with his mother to be lactated, to give him the physical strength. Then he was given the provided with the company of Hazrat Asia, who loved her and who was merciful and kind to her, so that where from that is from where he would learn, he learned how to love, to be merciful, and to be kind. And then he was kept in the court of Pharaoh, where he got exposed to the worldly knowledge and the skills and the leader management and exposure to all forms of administrative issues also. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shifting him to Madian, where he will be receiving... <coughs> where he will be receiving the religious training by Prophet Shoaib alayhi salam. So he left it, that is, he left Egypt, and uh, he said that, Lord, save me from the wrongdoing people. And when he directed himself towards Madi, and he said, perhaps my Lord will guide me to the sound way. So we realize that in an unfelt manner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the conditions for Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to leave Egypt, where he had acquired till now all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had wanted him to learn. And now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to expose him to the next training, Allah quietly created the situations and took him out of Egypt and took him to Madian. Allah does what he wants. And what he wants 
is the best planning and Allah is the best planner of all. And remember here in the verse number 22, he said, Hazrat Musa -Salams was sure and he was hopeful that Allah will guide him to a sound way. And remember that all, he said that Asa Rabbi Ayyahti Ani Sabil. And remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reciprocates with his obedient bondsmen who rely on him and who depend on him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to all those who rely and de depend on him. When Hazrat Musa said that Allah will help me and Allah will guide me, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely did help him, support him and guide him. Allahumma ihdina siratul mustaqeem. Allah help all of us and protect all of us and guide us all to sirat mustaqeem. <coughs> Verse number 23 to 29 uh, being narrated the events which took place in the life of Hazrat Musa -Islam when he was in Madian. And when he came to the well of Madian, he found there a crowd of people watering their flocks. And he found aside from, from them two women driving back their flocks. He said, what is your circumstance? They said, we do not water <clears throat> they said, we do not water until the shepherds dispatch their flocks and our father is an old man. Now these two ladies were what? They were the daughters of Hazrat Shuaib salam, and they had no brother and their father was old. So they had to bring their animals for watering to the well. Now, what it shows is that in the time of need, in the time of need and in certain situations when there is no alternative, the women folk can also come outdoor and they can also perform the outdoor activities staying within the limits of Allah. And in time of need, men and women, they can interact provided the conversation is modest and within the prescribed limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And moreover, we also learn that helping the deprived and helping the underprivileged is what has always been the sunnah of the prophets. Verse 24, so he watered their flocks for them. Then he went back to the shade and he said, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. He said, my Lord, indeed I am for whatever good you would send down to me in need. This is a supplication which has been taught to us in Quran. And these were the words of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. I generally recite it when I plan to start any new project or any new mission. So I would request all of you to remember this and supplicate in the similar situation also. Verse number 25, then one of the two women came to him walking with shyness. She said, indeed, my father invites you that he may reward you for having watered for us. So when he came to him and related to him the story, he said, fear not, you have escaped from the wrongdoing people. Now, this girl came back to this girl who was the daughter of a prophet, Hazrat Shoaib alayhi salam. She came back to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And Quran here explains the manner of the daughter of Hazrat Shoaib alayhi salam, that she had a shy manner. Shyness is a manner of modest Muslim women. And uh, their father, Hazrat Shoaib alayhi salam, had Called, uh, asked them to call him to repay, to repay of his kindness, because repaying the kindness of people is a sunnah of prophets also. And when Hazrat Musa alayhi salam went to see Hazrat Shoaib alayhi salam, then he asked him who he was and where he'd come from. And Hazrat Musa alayhi salam narrated him all the events of Egypt. And there Hazrat Musa, Hazrat Shoaib alayhi salam understood who he was, that he was to be a prophet in future. And he also consoled Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Verse 26, 
one of the women said, and she was suggesting her father, that, oh, my father, hire him. Indeed, the best one you can hire is the strong and the trustworthy. So the verse explains the traits of, uh, of a good attendant should be that the attendant should be strong and trustworthy and honest. Verse 27, he said, who has a shoaib salam? Indeed, I wish to wed one of these. These means what? The daughters. One of these, my two daughters, on the condition that you serve me for eight years. But if you complete 10, it will be as a favor from you. And I do not wish to put you in difficulty. You will find me if Allah wishes, if Allah wills from among the righteous. Musa Islam said, that is established between me and you. Whichever of the two terms I complete, there is no injustice to me and Allah over what we say is a witness. So in this verse 27 and 28, there was an agreement made between Hazrat Musa salam and Hazrat Shuaib salam, and then Hazrat Musa salam fulfilled his promise also. Verse 29, and when Musa alayhi salam had completed the term and was traveling with his family, he perceived from the direction of the mount a fire. He said to his family, stay here. Indeed, I have perceived a fire. Perhaps I will bring you from there some information or burning wood from the fire that you may warm yourselves. <coughs> But, we, but when he came to it, he was called from the right side of the valley in a blessed spot from the tree, O Musa, indeed I am Allah, Lord of the worlds. And he was told, throw down your staff. But when he saw it writhing as if it was a snake, he turned in flight and did not return. Allah said, O Musa, approach and fear not, indeed you are of the secure insert your hand into the opening of your garment it will come out white without disease and draw in your arm close to you as prevention from fear for those for those are two proofs from your lords to pharaoh and establishment indeed they have been a people defiantly disobedient he said my lord indeed i kill from them someone and i fear that they will kill me and my brother harun is more fluent than me in tongue so send him with me as a support verifying me indeed i fear that they will deny me Verse 35, Allah said, we will strengthen your arm through your brother and grant you both supremacy so they will not reach you. It will be through our signs you and those who follow you will be the predominant. So in the verse number 29 to 23, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, narrated the events that when uh, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was chosen by the pro prophethood and then he was blessed with two miracles and he was launched to invite Pharaoh and his people towards the truth. And in uh, this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining how he will keep on supporting and helping Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and his followers and finally they will be victorious. But when Musa alayhi salam came to them with our signs as clear-cut evidences, they said, this is not except invented magic and we have not heard of this religion among our forefathers. And Musa alayhi salam said, my Lord is more knowing than we or you of who has come with guidance from him and to whom will be succession in the home. Indeed, wrongdoers do not succeed. And Pharaoh said, O oh, imminent ones, I have not known to have a God other than me. Then ignite for me, O Haman, a fire upon the clay and make for me a tower that I may look at the God of Musa alayhi salam. And indeed, I do think he is among the liars. And he was arrogant, he and his soldiers in the land without right. And they thought that they would not be returned to us. So we took him and his soldiers and threw them into the sea. So see how was the end of the wrong tours. And we made them leaders inviting to fire. And on the day of resurrection, they will not be helped. And we caused to overtake them in this world 
occurs and on the day of resurrection they will be of the despised and we gave Musa alayhi salam the scripture after we had destroyed the former generations as enlightenment for the people and guidance and mercy that they might be reminded and oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam were you were not on the western side of the mount when we revealed to Musa alayhi salam the command and you were not among the witnesses to that but we produced many generations after Musa alayhi salam and prolonged was their duration and you were not a resident among the people of Madian reciting to them our verses but we were senders of this message and you were not at the side of the mount when we called to Musa alayhi salam but was sent as a mercy from your Lord to warn a people to whom no warner had come before you that they might be reminded if not that a disaster should strike them for what their hands put forth of sins and they would say our lord why did you not send us a messenger so we could have followed your verses and being among the believers but when the truth came to them from us they said why was he not given like that which was given to musa alayhi salam did they not believe in, did they not disbelieve in that which was given to Musa alayhi salam before? They said they are but two works of magic supporting each other, and indeed we are in both disbelievers. Say, then bring a scripture from Allah, which is more guiding than either of them, that I may follow it if you should be truthful. But if they do not respond to you, then know that they only follow their own desires. And who is more astray than one who follows his desires without guidance from Allah? Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Allahumma ikhtina sirat al mustaqim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us all to stop following our desires without the guidance from Allah. And we have repeatedly conveyed to them the Quran that they might be reminded those to whom we gave the scriptures before it, they are believers in it. And when it is recited to them, they say, we have believed in it. Indeed, it is the truth from our Lord. Indeed, we were even before it Muslims submitting to Allah. Those will be given their rewards twice for what they patiently endured and because they avert evil through good and from what we have provided them they spent and when they hear ill speech they turn away from it and say for us are our deeds and for you are your deeds peace will be upon you and we seek not the ignorant indeed you do not guide whom you like but Allah guides whom he wills and he is the most knowing of the rightly guided people and they say if we were to follow the guidance with you we would be swept from our land had we not established for them a safe sanctuary to which we we are brought the fruits which we are brought the fruits of all things as provisions for us but most of them do not know and how many a city have we destroyed that has insolent in its way of living and those are their dwellings which have not been inhabited after them except briefly and it is we who were the inheritors and never would your lord have destroyed the cities until he has sent to their mother a messenger reciting to them our verses and we would not destroy the cities except while their people were wrongdoers and whatever thing <clears throat> and whatever thing your people have been given it is only for the enjoyment of worldly life and its adornment and what is with allah is better and more lasting so will you not reason then is whom we have promised a good promise which he will obtain like he for whom we provided enjoyment of the worldly life but then he is on the day of resurrection among those presented for punishment in hell and born of the day and born of the day he will call them and say where are my partners which you used to claim 
those upon whom the word will have come into effect will say, our Lord, these are the ones we led to error. We led them to error just as we were in error. We declare our disassociation from them to you. They did not use to worship us. And it will be said, invoke your partners and they will invoke them, but they will not respond to them and they will see the punishment if only they had followed guidance and mention the day he will call them and he will say, what did you answer the messengers? But the information will be unapparent to them that day, so they will not be able to ask one another. But as for one who had repented, believed, and done righteousness, it is promised by Allah that he will be among the successful. And your Lord creates what he wills and chooses not for them, for them was the choice. Exalted is Allah, high above what they associate with him. Verse number 69. And your Lord knows what their breasts conceal and what they declare. Many times in Quran is this is this concept mentioned in Quran and mentioned this attribute of Allah that he is what he knows what is in the breasts of his bondsmen and what they conceal and what they declare. Allah is alimun bidhat is sudur and knowing this attribute of Allah almighty Allah who is the Maliki yawm al-deen how do we need to behave and how do we need to relate we need to remember that as an obedient Muslim, we just do not need to change our outwardly appearance to let the people know how good a Muslim we are, but we need to reform our inner selves also. Just having a beard or wearing a veil, but, but remembering that in the heart, we have all forms of awful wretched feelings like arrogance and envy and jealousy and love of the wealth and the lust of money or feelings of enmity and harsh feelings against the relatives of kin what we need to do is a moment has to be what a moment has to be inside out has to be a obedient bondsman of allah not only just our outwardly appearance do we need to create like a Muslim bondsman, but we need to reform our inner souls also. Verse 70, and he is Allah, there is no deity except him, to him is due all praises in the first life, and hereafter he is the final decision, and to him you will be returned. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. Allahumma aini ala umarat al-maut wa sakarat al-maut. Say, have you considered if Allah should make for you the night continuous until the day of resurrection? What deity other than Allah could bring you light? Then will you not hear? say have you considered if allah should make for you the day continuous until the day of resurrection what deity other than allah could bring you a night in which you may rest then will you not see and out of his mercy he made for you the night and the day that you may rest therein and by and by day seek from his bounty and that perhaps you will be grateful rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik and warn up the day he will call them and say where are my partners which you used to claim and we will extract from every nation a witness and say produce your proof and they will know that the truth belongs to Allah and lost from them is that which they used to invent. Verse number 76. From here onwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating the story of Karun. Indeed, Karun was from the people of Musa alayhi salam, but he tyrannized them 
and we gave him of treasures whose keys would burden a band of strong men there upon his people said to him do not exult indeed allah does not like those who are exultant the story of karun he was from the people of bani israel and we also learn from traditions that he was a paternal cousin of hazrat musa alaihi salam but he had failed to believe and have faith in hazrat musa alaihi salam and allah subhanahu wa taala and this was because of his love of the worldly riches and he had joined pharaoh and was among his courtiers and among the counselors to pharaoh and um, this was all because of enmity his enmity to hazrat musa alaihi salam and then his people told him what la tafrah inna allah la yuhibbul farihin that do not exalt allah subhanahu wa taala does not like all those who are what who are exultant but seek through that which allah has given you the home of hereafter and yet do not forgive do not forget your share of the world and do good as allah has done good to you and desire not corruption in the land indeed allah does not like corruptors now he had been blessed with with a, with a lot of wealth and um, this is what we've learned from the last verses and then in this verse we are reading that there were some wise people around him there were some righteous people around him who advised him to do what to spend charity for uh, for trading for jannah and to spend charity for hereafter but he paid no attention to all of them that is exactly what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked his companions one day he asked do you know who will be the needy and the poor of my ummah on the day of judgment and then he explained that the person who had plenty of wealth in this worldly life but he had not spent it as charity to trade for jannah so this person who was affording and he who had lot of wealth but he did not became a trader for jannah and he did not spend for the life hereafter and he did not take out charity from all his wealth and so he will be the needy and he will be the poorest among the people of the ummah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we also learn from the hadith that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that every day every day two announcers among the angels of allah they supplicate and they say that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and increase the wealth of all those who spend charity in the path of allah and destroy the wealth of all those who are stingy and do not spend in the path of allah he said when he was advised by all those righteous people what did he have to say he said i was only given it because of knowledge i have this was what this was his arrogance did he not know that allah had destroyed before him of generations those who were greater than him in power and greater in accumulation of wealth but the criminals about their sins will not be asked so he came out before his people in his adornment those who desired the worldly life said oh would that we had like what what was given to karun indeed he is one of the great fortune but those who had been given the knowledge said woe to you the reward of allah is better for who believes and does righteousness and none are granted it except the patient and we caused the earth to swallow him and his home and there was for him no company to aid him other than allah nor was he of those who could defend himself so in this verse uh, he had come out boasting and he was in a feeling of what in an extreme love of the worldly riches and allah subhanahu wa taala dislikes what as allah says in quran inna allaha la yuhibbu man kana muhtalan fakhura so he was being what he was being muhtalan fakhura and um, those who had loved the worldly worldly belongings they were and those who were desirous of the worldly riches they envied him and they desired for that for themselves also this is exactly what allah says in quran innahu la hubbil khairi la shadid 
And Allah says in another verse, And Allah says in Surah Taqasur, Al-Haqqumut-Takasur and that is what Prophet Sallallahu has explained also that the condition of the sons of Adam Islam is that even if they have two valleys of gold, they would, he would desire for the third also. But the people of wisdom, they had warned him, as Allah has said in Quran, Innama amwalukum ba fitna. And Allah also says in Quran, Al-Malu wal banuna zinatul hayat dunya wal baqiyatu swalihat. So he was proud and he was arrogant. And as Allah punished him, as Allah says in Quran, in Allah, Allah does not like those who try to act arrogant. In Allah, there is absolutely no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what? La Allah does not love those. Allah does not approve of those who try to act and behave arrogant. And so he was punished that the earth swallowed him. As a tradition tells all of us that Allah says that greatness is his cloak and whoever tries to snatch it from him or share it with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be revengeful to him. So here we learn in this verse that Karun was trying to be what? Was trying to act great and was trying to be proud and arrogant so allah al-qahar and al-jabbar did what fakhasafna the earth was made to swallow him allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha allahumma inni as'aluka al-huda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafian rizqan tayyiban wa amalan mutakabbala Allahumma inni as'aluka ilmin la yanfa'u wa min qalbin la yakhshaw min nafsin la tashpa'u min da'watin la yustajabu lahu. And those who had wished for his position the previous day began to say, oh, how Allah extends provisions to those whom who wills of his servants and restricts it. If not that Allah had conferred favor on us, we would have caused it. He would have caused it to swallow us. Oh, how the disbelievers do not succeed that the home of hereafter be assigned to those who do not desire exaltedness upon the earth or corruption, and the best outcome is for the righteous. Whoever comes on the day of judgment with a good deed will have better than it, and whoever comes with an evil deed, then those who did evil deeds will not be recompensed except as much of what they used to do. Verse 85, indeed, he who imposed upon you the Quran will take you back to a place of return. Say, my Lord is most knowing of who brings guidance and who is in clear error. Now, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, here Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, now let me read the next uh, verse and then I'll explain. And you were not. You were not expecting that the book would be conveyed to you, but it is a mercy from your Lord. So do not be an assistant to the disbelievers and never let them avert you from the verses of Allah after they have been revealed to you and invite people to your Lord and never be of those who associate others than Allah. So this verse is explaining this verse number eight, the verse number 86 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not expecting that the book would be revealed to him we learn from the history and from the events of the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he used to shift to the cave of Hira before his prophethood he used to shift to the cave of Hira in search of truth in search of a solution for the ailing and the suffering and the misguided humanity. But he was not expecting and he was not wanting or praying to be chosen as a prophet himself. It came to him as a surprise. Before prophethood he had, he hadn't in the vilest of dreams imagined that he would be chosen as a seal of prophet. The arrival of Hazrat Jibrail in the cave of Hira 
he was he was totally taken unaware he was in a state of shock as we know that he came shivering with fear and shock asking hazrat khadija radhiyallahu ta'ala anha to cover him with the blanket and he had also added that i'm scared for my life and she had consoled him and she had taken him to her cousin warqa bin nofil who had confirmed that he was he had been chosen as the prophet hood so he was not expecting he was not asking and he was not praying and supplicating to be chosen and the prophet and he was totally taken by surprise verse 88 and do not invoke with allah another deity there is no deity except him everything will be destroyed except his face his is the judgment and to him you will be returned so the final and the last verse giving the final note that there are no partners with allah submit to him with humbleness and obedience rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana zunubana wa qina azab an-nar sura al ankabut this sura was revealed in maka it has 69 verses seven stanzas and is the 29th by the order of arrangement the name uh, the sura gets its name from the verse 41 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says mathalu allazina takhazu min duni llahi awliya qamathal al ankabut إن أحنا البيوت لبيوت الأنقبوت لبيت الأنقبوت. الله سبحانه وتعالى is mentioning about the ankabut that is the spider in Arabic and is giving a parable of the web of the of the spider also. The time period of revelation is. according to some scholars the first 10 verses where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about the hypocrites are those which were revealed in madina and the rest of them were revealed in makkah and in the verses between 56 to 60 they clearly show that they were revealed sometimes before the migration to abyssinia the topic and the main theme and summary of the surah is that uh, we know that since the surah was revealed in makkah and this was the time when the muslims were being persecuted and tortured so in such conditions the verses were revealed to console and to guide prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions and also to give the disbelievers a strict warning and some of the new converts in these situations they were being forced by the the family members to revert to the ancestral religion so the verses they will be so uh, so these all these companions they were they had queries as how to handle these social pressures of their families who were forcing them to to revert to the ancestral religion so their queries the queries of all these companions under these difficult situations were answered and they were guided also and uh, the tribesmen they were using all forms the tribesmen of makkah they were using all forms of tactics to pressurize the companions so under these conditions muslims were also advised to shift to shift and to emigrate and with emigration allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had also promised his help in the open lands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bismillahir rahmanir rahim